to be being called to serve is, it's a, it's a call from our Heavenly Father who loves all of His children on this earth very much. And He's, he's calling me one of His children to go out and, and find those other, my brothers and sisters essentially, to hopefully to bring them home to our Father. It's almost like what Christ did when He lived on the earth, when He was constantly helping others. If you teach somebody the truth, I'm sure that they're going to feel good, and you're going to feel good, and Heavenly Father's going to feel good. On a mission, you're serving you know, night and day, 12 hours a day, and you're not thinking of yourself anymore. It sounds scary. I mean, you're going to be away for two years, and you've never done it before, you don't know what it's going to be like. You're serving the people that you're teaching the gospel to. You're, you're opening doors to them that they probably, that probably wouldn't be opened if you weren't there. When you're serving the Lord, you're doing His work. And you know you're doing it for the right reasons, and He'll help you. Dear Elder Samowitz, you are hereby called to serve as a missionary of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. You are assigned to labor in the California San Jose Mission, in the Mississippi Jackson Mission, Italy Catania so Mission, scary. Indiana Annapolis Mission, Venezuela Caracas Mission. <laughs> <laughs> You have been recommended as one worthy to represent the Lord as a minister of the restored gospel. You will be an official representative of the church. You will also be expected to devote all your time and attention to serving the Lord, leaving behind all other personal affairs. As you do these things, the Lord will bless you and you will become an effective advocate and messenger of the truth. It is anticipated that you will serve for a period of 24 months. You should report to the Missionary Training Center in Provo, Utah. I'll never forget that first day at the MTC. It was, it was great. I loved it. The most memorable thing for me was when we all met together in this room. My parents were there, and after a brief orientation about the MTC, we were asked to say goodbye. And we went out one door, and our parents went out another. I was so excited I couldn't really cry. I did a little, but smiled a lot. I remember giving hugs to my family. And my little brother was just bawling. I remember that. <laughs> it really touched me because we, we've always been close and it was hard to leave like that. I was just mostly curious about what was next. Where do we go from here once we go out that door? I was walking around and I was in this white shirt with tie and I go, I don't look like a missionary. You look good, Elder. <laughs> the first day you're kind of trying to get oriented. Makes it a little hard, but everybody's mixed up, so you fit right in. I can, I can tell. After you say goodbye to your family, whatever loneliness you feel, it leaves because you're taken in. You're part of a, a team. Can't imagine coming on a mission without going to the MTC. Everybody thought missionary work, ate missionary work, drank missionary work, slept missionary work, and. Uh, you just had an unreal spiritual experience. It seemed as though they were getting us into shape, not just spiritually, but uh, physically as well. The facilities were great. I mean, they had everything there that we would ever need. It really amazed me that you have all these missionaries learning all these different languages, but they're going out to share the exact same message. The vegetables. Kamisana ni. What's Kami-san need? Two gods. I caught on fire. Like I never thought I could. Just caught on fire. 
You know what? The MTC is all over, and uh, you find yourself at the airport, family's there, and for some of us, we had to say goodbye all over again. on the airplane I couldn't help wondering what the mission president would be like what the mission would be like the people it's exciting uh, it's instant love it's the kind of things that uh, make exciting times in a mission president's life to be able to see brand new missionaries and their excitement their enthusiasm it's it's like greeting a new child into the world almost Cartwright, how yeah, are you? Pretty good. good. Did you have a good flight? Elder Stevenson? I've come to see the real value for those missionaries who come to the mission field where they have provided at least part of their own support. You see their dedication level is much higher. They understand better because they've sacrificed, if you would, a little. Parents need to be good examples. Uh, they need to show their children that, that what they believe in is important to them and, and they can only do that by attending church and, and having family home evening and that's where the seeds of future missionaries are sown. Each member of the, of the ward, whether it be a seminary teacher, a primary teacher, a scout master, that touch their lives in a very special way. We can't raise our children by ourselves. There's too much competition day by day on the outside. We do the best we can with being consistent, showing love and, and uh, loving the gospel. Lance will come home from seminary and tell me about a way that his seminary teacher presented a particular idea. And those ideas stick with him, and he's anxious to share them with us, and I would guess that they'll stick and he'll share them in the mission field, too. As a parent, you wait for that letter where the, his testimony comes through for the very first time. It's not mine, it's not 
Terry's, it's not the grandparents. It's not his scoutmaster's testimony, it's his. As I have observed missionaries, I think the hardest adjustment they have is learning to live with a companion 24 hours a day. I think that's the one really positive thing about a companion is that you motivate one another. You're not being pushed. I mean, if you wanted to slack off and never work, you could. And I always just thought that, I don't know, that someone would be there making you do it, but it all comes from inside. You have to be a self-motivator. You have to get out there and do it. It's a challenge. I mean, everyone comes into the mission field with different backgrounds. But you, you learn quickly how to relate with others. And a lot of times, your companion becomes your best friend. Some companions, I did most of the cooking, which was no big deal. Because I, I mean, anybody can cook chili dogs. The relationship that is there with missionaries, it's, it's great. You know, they both wear the black name tag. There's nothing like it. We'll be friends forever. Our successful missionaries are ones that are up when they should be up, are doing the things they should be doing. When missionaries are successful in teaching, feeling the Spirit, they've never been happier in their life. You know, when we go out and do the work, we shouldn't just hope for blessings, we should expect them. Of course, that comes with knowing that the gospel is true. I mean, you've got to expect that people are going to want to listen to you, that they want to hear the message you have. I think that's probably one of the most important things in missionary work, is loving the people. And a lot of times you're, you're shy and trying to develop a relationship of trust with people and meeting new people is tough for a lot of missionaries. You learn more about the Savior and it becomes a part of your life. And the more you learn, I guess, the more you love. I don't know that there's anything that we do in life that brings more joy, that brings more real joy and real happiness to our lives than serving and helping someone else. And that's really all a missionary does for 18 months or two years. He's engaged exclusively in serving others. Hello. I mean, you go out and knock on someone's door, Good. and you're going in, and, and in a sense, they almost have to trust you automatically to listen to your message. There's nothing like being in a teaching situation where you're sitting down with your companion, the person you're teaching is on the, uh, sitting on the couch. You're there, you got your scriptures, you're teaching them about Joseph Smith story, you're teaching them about the restoration, and they're interested. I think my, uh, my favorite experiences are when you're teaching a first discussion. And the first is my favorite because you tell about Heavenly Father, about Jesus Christ, and about Joseph Smith and the Book of Mormon. And when they're really feeling the Spirit and you know it, you feel it inside, and then when, when you get them to say the closing prayer, I think that's the neatest because sometimes it's their, their first prayer and it's, it's so sincere. Amen. You spent your time out here trying to share with people what you believe, and after all the no's that people tell you, finally somebody says, yes, sure, come on in. I want to hear what you have to say, and it all pays off right there. I, as an individual, and, and as the head of the family, we just didn't have any real direction. And uh, uh, we didn't have a base, so kind of a home to come home to. If um, we hadn't met the two missionaries when we did, we would have been bouncing around as we had been over the past 17 or 18 years in different religions, seeking. Someone told us that there was a family of six that just walked into church that day. And uh, <laughs> we were pretty excited. I don't even think we had been sitting down for maybe five minutes when they were right behind us and introduced themselves and shook our hands. And we thought, well, that's nice. <laughs> and then um, they asked if we would like them to come visit. The first discussion, I remember it. It was really spiritual. It was so strong. And the mother, Sue, she looked like she was going to cry a couple times. And this was, she had just been waiting for something like this. This is what she wanted. You can relax because they're relaxed. They're not judging anything. They're not judging your home. They're not judging your kids. They're not judging you. It's just they're just sharing something they want to share. 
So you develop this real immediate friendship and trust. And so as we progressed, it was more like, rather than uh, teachers and students, it was more like uh, all on a little journey together. We knew then it was more than just a friendship with the elders, even though that friendship mm -hmm. was true. And, and at that point, we realized there's nothing wrong with that because they really are doing, you know, a job for the Lord. And, and that's how Christ would be. When you do a lot of work with someone like that, to see them go through the waters of baptism, that just really, it makes everything worth it. You go through a lot of trials, you have a lot of problems, a lot of concerns, you give a lot of prayers for them, but when you see them get baptized, that just makes everything worth it. That's, that's the icing on the cake. I don't think Elder Brown has the slightest idea really what he has done. Elder Brown has some converts to the church, uh, Brown and Rayburn. But the effect that they have and the longevity of that effect is not only with the immediate baptism, but it's going to be through our children and their children and their children. how lonely and how unhappy people are and I know what the gospel can do for them and I know what happiness and peace it can bring into their lives and I, I want to be a part of that. I want to be able to share what the happiness that has brought into my life to them. I can't say that I know for sure why I'm here but I know for sure that I'm supposed to be here. I can tell just by the people's lives that I've touched, by the things that I've learned, by my family back home that's been blessed why I'm staying here and why I want to be here is because I'm so happy. It's just I wouldn't have missed it for the world. Well, the young people who's struggling with the gospel, who's even strong in the, in the church now, with strong families are struggling, to come on a mission because here is where you truly learn and you really truly understand the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is where you know it. And this is where you grow both spiritually, your personality, you truly develop into a person, a man, a woman, you develop here. Before my mission, I always thought I had a testimony, but now as I look back, if I did, it was a very weak testimony. My mission has helped me come to a knowledge that the Book of Mormon is true, and that Joseph Smith was a prophet of God. It's helped me come to a knowledge that this is the greatest work in the world. Well, he always takes home a testimony. What I really think he takes home are feelings about people. And when it's time to get on the plane, they realize that they may not see these people again. That's what's tough to leave. been the best two years of my life. I'd go again. I'd go again in a minute. A mission has taught me who I want to be and what I want to be in life. I just feel like I've stepped back and taken a look at a bigger picture as far as eternity. I know God lives and that through Christ I can live my Heavenly Father again and one of the greatest feelings in this earth is to be guided by the Holy Spirit to do something and then to have done it and know that your Heavenly Father is pleased. <laughs>